Uh, Misty, is this compelling testimony? What is the prosecution doing in pointing this out to the jury? Yeah, Marnie, it certainly is compelling. So first of all, we're now learning that Chad Daybell, uh, with his wife, had actually increased the amount of her insurance. The testimony was that she added him as a spouse prior to her death and that her insurance policy went up. Well, now we see he wastes no time. Right after she dies, two days later, he's there trying to collect on the policy. Not only that, when asked about when a death certificate would be available, he says he's ordered eight copies. Keep in mind, Marnie, there's a charge here that we don't really focus on because we're talking about the death of JJ and Ty Lee and Tammy. But there's also a grand theft charge, and that relates to all of these government benefits, life insurance benefits that the couple, according to the prosecutors, Chad and Lori, were trying to collect on these deceased individuals. So that's how it all fits into the puzzle. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a hard puzzle to figure out at this point. It's very complex. The jury also, Misty, heard from a detective in Hawaii this week who searched Lori Vallow's car when she was in Hawaii. They found Ty Lee's credit card, JJ's phone, both of the kids' birth certificates and social security cards, and also the death certificate for Charles Vallow, her late husband. How critical is this piece of evidence? So that is even more important for the purposes of linking all of this to Lori Vallow, because as you flagged, Marnie, we th it feels like Chad is almost on trial with all of the evidence that we see coming out in the case. But this is a conspiracy case of, of Lori Vallow. She is the defendant in this case. So all of this, having those documents to the two children who have not been seen since September, and now they have these documents, Lori Vallow is in possession of them in Hawaii. That's very compelling. So first of all, remember, Again, we're talking about that theft. Part of this was collecting on government benefits, both on the children and Tammy. The other piece of it is the motive. Part of the motive, according to prosecutors, was the financial gain. It's that nobody's going to stand in the way of Lori and Chad and financial gain coupled with these beliefs. So finding those documents in her possession, really, really important to the prosecution of this case. How significant is it that Chad Daybell's trial has now been pushed back? I, for the for the defense of Chad Daybell, they're going to have a lot of time to watch how this trial plays out, see how it all plays out, and then to craft their defenses. They're getting a real preview of all of the evidence. So his trial's pushed back. There's some evidentiary issues that we've seen in filings relating to forensic evidence. That's part of the reason why there's a delay. He also waived his right to speedy trial, so the pressure isn't on to get that into the courtroom. But he's going to have a, a an advantage to see what happens here and then utilize that in hit the defense of his case. So I think it's advantageous to him uh, and, and we'll see how it plays out. We're going to see a lot of the same evidence that we're seeing in the Lori Vallow case. Right. Sometimes it feels as though this is his trial playing out. Uh, my correspondent, uh, Brian Enton, my colleague, spoke to a woman who was in jail with Lori Vallow this week and she testified or in, uh, didn't testify in court, but told him that she was using sock puppets while she was behind bars. Is there a chance that the judge um, watching all of this evidence play forward and some of the concerns about her mental competency, that he makes a decision on whether she is still fit to stand trial? That's a great question. It would, of course, be something that her defense team would likely raise, that if there was a concern regarding her mental health and whether or not she is competent. And for, for the purposes of competency, it means that you understand the nature of the charges against you and you have the ability to participate in your own defense. It's very different from a mental capacity defense. So it relates to th those two aspects. The defense would raise it to the extent that it was a potential issue. What the judge does is order an independent medical evaluation, and then that is assessed and a determination is made. Keep in mind, Marnie, we do know that that was an issue pre-trial. This trial was delayed significantly while she was found incompetent and then ultimately uh, had treatment and then was found to be competent. That's why we're sitting here today. But if it is an issue, it's likely raised by the defense, and there's a whole process in place to make that evaluation. Interesting. And we are still waiting for the defense to lay out their case. But based on what you've heard so far, Misty, which way do you think the jury will lean? 
I truly think, Marnie, and again, I'm a defense lawyer, so I always say you have to wait for everything to be out there, all the evidence to be there in order to make that determination. But right now, the prosecution did such a good job of laying out all of these beliefs. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.